Once again, surging power bills threaten businesses. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee. We have to have a look at this article about an IGA owner who has just got an insanely high power bill. Now, the problem is here, people are going to say, it's because we privatized the market. Well, we kind of didn't. The market's bullshit because the government can step in and can do whatever the hell they want to it. They can force power companies to produce power and they can, well, set the prices. So it's not a market. We're ignoring the signals. What's happened is we have not invested anything in infrastructure that produces a reliable and consistent baseload power. You know, those good old-fashioned coal, gas, and oil power plants? Haven't. None of those. I li- Walking to the house tonight to record, you know, coming over here, I got an ad on my phone for Host Plus, proudly not investing in any fossil fuels or any renewables. Oh, no, sorry. No, they're only investing in renewables. That's it. No fossil fuels. Fossil fuels, bad. Invest in renewables, good. I mean, am I the only one that's getting sick of this bullshit? This is why, this is why we're facing this crisis. But Florian, gas has gone up. Yes, Australia should be producing more. We should be encouraging exploration. They put a ban on onshore exploration in Victoria for how long? Okay, we need to explore. This is, this is the thing. We're a colony on the edge of the world. We're not going to be a world leader in anything. Okay, maybe a little bit here and there. But for most of us, we've got to work our nice boring mining job, our construction industry job, and build a family and a life there. If you had more capacity to export and mine petroleum and coal, this creates more jobs. This creates more opportunities. Okay, and some of these jobs are pretty bloody good. Okay, come on. Let's, let's start this once again. I'm going to bring up the, hang on, I'll bring up the uh, energy market right now. We'll have a look at that. We'll see how we're going. As I'm recording at uh, 7.40 at night. Okay, and we'll have a look here. In Victoria, it's good. You know, the wind, wind's producing a bit. There you go, 19%. The prop. See, the issue is all of this infrastructure could have been, all this money could have been spent into just burning fossil fuels. And these are always sitting at over 100%. That can't be good for aging infrastructure. So what if we had, instead of building 50 million bloody wind farms, you have, that are, what, what are they producing? What, 80 megawatts, 27 megawatts, 4 megawatts. Where well, you've got here, here's a power station, 281. 165. Now these are the gas ones that they kick in when... They don't have enough capacity. 362, 583 megawatts. So instead of building all of this infrastructure all over the place, all the bloody power lines, the clearing, the land, the embodied energy and trucking the shit out there, if you just built another one of these things, maybe a modern, cleaner power plant, we won't have these issues, everyone. What's what's this one here? There you go. Look, that's gone hydro. Don't get me wrong. Hydro is great. How many of the Greens are going to let you build another dam? Our potable water has not kept up with our population growth. Not at all. Most of the dams built in the last 20 years have been by mining companies. Okay, look, you've got all of this infrastructure here that's completely useless. For half the time that we're generating power, for peak times that we're generating power. They want everyone to buy electric cars, and what are they going to do? Plug them at home. Okay, and you're saying, oh, Florian, let's get batteries. Okay. Let's say we're using all of these power, these uh, solar farms to provide to the grid. Then you'll need just as many to provide for power storage at night time. Okay, you can't provide to the grid and charge the batteries at the same time to equal amounts, can you? Anyway, have a look here at Queensland. It's, it's the same thing, guys. All of this infrastructure is only useful for half the time. And the rest, it's hardly producing anything. You know, if you want to go renewable, go or, or low carbon, low embodied energy. Go, I don't know. I don't know how low hydro is. To be honest, it it has huge um, environmental impacts. But then again, we need more potable water, so that's good. But hydro as well. It's it's depending on the on the droughts. Everyone's forgotten we had droughts in Tasmania and they weren't producing enough power years ago, so they bring it from the mainland. You want to go nuclear? You you know you want to be not be afraid of it and go that because 
Again, we've got another business that's getting threatened by these insanely high power prices, everyone. So IGA, own, IGA owner shocked by a $218,000 power bill. A Queensland supermarket owner has been left reeling by an impossible electricity price increase that would nearly quadruple his annual bill to 218000 Now, I'm going to put my conspiracy hat on here. Okay, I'm going to go, you know, off, off script. You've got a lot of people who are concerned that there is, seems to be a globalist push to really undermine, well, individual liberty and individual freedom and small and medium business. It really seems to be that, doesn't it? Now, this is probably one of the most effective ways you can easily destroy businesses. Much more effective than anything else. You don't need to have the police in the streets. You don't need to create chaos. Just make it so bloody expensive people can't do it. And another thing, you know, what if this supermarket, okay, our power bill's so high, we have to cut down on, on our refrigeration and the freezers. We need to reduce that. Let's put in more products that don't need refrigeration. Oh, look, we've got this new Frankenfood plant-based shit that'll give you cancer in 20 years, but it doesn't need to be in a fridge. We'll just put it there on the shelf full of seed oil and garbage. People can eat that. You know, that's the concern that this is going to, to, for me, the real worry is that this is going to reduce the amount of meat consumption and increase uh, health issues while also destroying businesses. And, you know, it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be some global um, global conspiracy theory. It's just ideological poison coming through from all levels of strata of our government and our society. And, and frankly, I think a lot of that is being influenced by the World Economic Forum and those type of people. And it go, you know, they go to their conventions and their meetings, you know, and then they bring it back to their civil service jobs and they, they create initiatives and do bullshit and it starts becoming part of the culture so you can't weed out this type of thinking. So you've got stupid things like, you know, um, I don't know, uh, a huge push for renewable energy and not even a serious consideration of nuclear and real things that could make an impact. So anyway, back to this. So I'm, I'm quite concerned at the longer-term impacts of these type of, well, interventions, shall we say, and this ideological thinking. This, this is the fruit. This is the fruit of the green thinking, guys. Don't just blame the last government. Don't even blame Labor. You know, the Labor mob in, in charge now, they've got nothing to do with this. This is, this is the fact that you've got businesses refusing to lend to fossil fuel investment. That's what it is. And where did that come from? Okay, it came from a bunch of idiots that are Australian citizens voting for and calling for this stuff and lobbying for it. A Queensland supermarket owner has been left reeling by an impossible electricity price increase that would nearly quadruple his annual bill from fifty-eight grand to 218000 Lewis Kelly... Anderson told the Courier Mail he was shell-shocked after AGL informed him of the looming increase for his IGA supermarket at Mapleton on the Sunshine Coast. Mr. Anderson said the staggering increase would mean 80% of his business expenses would go to paying for power. 80%. And who's going to pay for that? He's going to have to put the price up on every single bloody thing he sells. Everything. Everything. This is, this is why, okay, you need to stop pushing for this renewable shit. Guys, it's not going to work. It's just going it to reduce our quality of life. It's going to make cost of living go up. We've been telling you this for a long time. All the sensible people have. I know you don't like them. I know you don't like some of the conservative politicians because they have all of these bloody ideas like individual responsibility and not being a fucking leech or being a victim your whole life. But you got to start listening to them now because in 10 years' time, how many businesses are we going to have left? It'll just be two, you know, calls and woolies. They'll be the only bloody ones. We'll be eating all of bloody, you know, plant-based meat shit and getting cancer in five years' time. We'd find it very difficult, if not impossible, to pay that, he said, adding the family-owned business of 26 years had already installed as many solar panels as it could on the roof. There you go. He's doing what he can. A copy of his bill was provided to News.com showing the peak energy rate 
changing from his premises, is set to increase from 6.54 to 25.5 cents per kilowatt hour when his 24-month contract period rolls over on November 1, an increase of nearly 300%. The off-peak rate will go from 4.4 to 16.0 cents per kilowatt hour, a 260% increase. He told the newspaper AGL had informed him the price hike was out of control and blamed the war in... The war in you, what... War in you, what bullshit is that? It's got nothing to do with that. Blame the war in Ukraine. It's a lack of investment in infrastructure. AGL, I mean, they wanted to split off the company to get rid of all of the dirty bit part of the business that was probably actually producing. Well, they wanted to just you know, not maintain them anymore. Why hasn't AGL invested in more capacity to deal with this? The war in Ukraine. What, what bullshit is this? Australia um, would have heard about the unprecedented situation impacting the wider energy market, and this is no exception. This sort of increase is not unique to AGL, and other retailers will be informing their commercial and and industrial customers of similar price changes, he said. When commercial and industrial customers with high electricity usages, such as supermarkets, come out of contract with their retailer, they are exposed to current market conditions, including much higher wholesale costs and network charges, which are impacting all energy retailers and the wider market. This is very different to many smaller businesses who do not usually use this amount of electricity and are on standard or market offerings. He added, while we don't com- comment on specific customers, we are aware of the additional pressure the unprecedented energy market situation is placing on our commercial and industrial customers, and we are actively working closely with them as they come out of their contracts to help them with their options. AGL's position is that Mr. Anderson's contract with AGL for two years in 2020, when wholesale network energy costs were substantially lower than they are now. The power company contends that his annual bill is set to increase from 58 to around 110 per annum, or just double, not quadruple, just double, yeah. Oh, oh that, that's so much better. That's so much better. AGL says his business uses a high amount of energy, 390 watts per... Oh, fucking... How dare you use too much energy? Greta says no. Social credit score down. Bad, bad business. I'm... And it's therefore classified as commercial and industrial customers. So smaller businesses, which use less than 100 megawatt hours per year, operate on market contracts with prices set by AGL or energy regulators. For example, smaller... But yeah, I don't care about that. Commercial and industrial customers contract on an individual basis with energy retailers with prices set largely at market rates. Well, he should have signed them up for 10... He should have locked them in for 10 years. The Queensland Chamber of Commerce and Industry has called on the state government to urgently step in with a support package for businesses, warning the skyrocketing energy costs were a critical concern and not addressed in this week's state budget. We know rebates have worked in the past as an appropriate mechanism to relieve power bill pressures, especially for small businesses. No, 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 stuff it. No, let it, let the impact be felt. This is the shit you voted for, guys. This is what you're lobbying for. This is the, the bloody, you know, environmental scores these companies now have to have with their, their stock ratings. This is, this is the future, okay? It's this shit that you want. How do you think Australia is going to survive if they shut down all our coal power plants? What the hell do you think is going to happen then? We've got Labor calling for that. The Greens calling for that. To shut down our coal industry. These idiots are in power. They've got enough people voting for fringe lunatics like this that they get Senate seats. Okay? What the hell's going on? What's the future in in Australia going to be? It's going to be shit. Okay? It's going to be... We should all become preppers. For larger businesses, however, which are likely to feel a more significant impact, some likely to see up to a 21.2% increase on their bills, CCIQ is keen to see long-term solutions like business sustainability incentives and initiatives to help relieve power bill pressure now and in the future. Yeah, build another fucking coal mine and another plant. There you go. Boom. Increase Increase the supplier competition in this market here. Look at all these things running red hot, 99%, 97%, 96%, 102%, 93%. You know, let's just get a, you know, allow 
remove the ban on nuclear, allow the market to find solutions. Wouldn't that be novel? How many of you would invest your super? You know, if there was a new a new business starting up a new super fund going purely nuclear energy for Australia, how many of you would just put it in there? Go fuck it, I'm going in. Just to stick it to the host plus prats. I, I'm tempted. I wouldn't care about the returns. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm over this. Opposition energy spokesman Ted O'Brien has called on Prime Minister Amber Easy to take, step, take steps to deliver on Labor's promise to cut power. They can't do it. Wanting thousands of smaller businesses are at risk of collapse. Yeah, the, I mean, it's bullshit. If, if, if Labor hands out money to cut power prices, we're just going to have to pay it back in other taxes anyway. That's not a solution, okay? That's just typical political band-aiding over the shit that's going on. Australia risks a run of business closures if the Labor government continues to do nothing about the short-term impacts of soaring power prices. Only last month, Labor was promising to cut power bills, and Australians expect nothing less than for them to deliver on that promise. Oh, come on. Who who is stupid enough to really believe any promises that the politicians give you? Now, I I feel sorry for you if this is your first time encountering the fact that it's all bullshit, guys. They're not going to deliver on their promises. They're all lies. They can't deliver on them because they've probably got no money, and they realize if they keep going down the same bloody path, they're going to stuff the economy even more. That's why you vote for a reduction in government. Okay, all these people prattling on about, oh, corruption. Ah." Yeah, it's going to happen, guys. Okay, these are people that have got their snouts snouts in the trough. They're going to hoover up all the shit they can. And creating more government bodies to deal with that isn't the point. You just want to make it smaller. Okay, corruption is going to happen. Make the government smaller so there's less of it. There's the solution. Not more bloody government departments. Matt O'Brien claimed the coalition was managing these pressures up until a month ago and we were able to cut the average power bill for small businesses by 10% over the last two years alone. Labor came to office promising even further cuts, but prices are now going in the other direction, he said. I mean, the coalition must love this. They must love it. I'm deeply concerned for small businesses across Australia that will soon be slugged with unaffordable increases to their power bills. Now, here's the thing. Does Albo give a shit about small businesses? Does he? You know, Howard cared about small businesses because his father had a small business that was done over, that was screwed. Okay, that affected him. What about Albo? What's his story? Federal Energy Minister Chris Bowen warned over the weekend that Australians were in for a bumpy winter of spiraling energy costs, saying there was no quick fix to the crisis. No, there is no quick fix. It's too late. You've stuffed it up. Wait, wait a minute. I, I, know, I know a quick fix. I've got a quick fix, lads. Let's just get all of these things here that aren't making any power. Let's make them make more power. What we do is we'll charge our batteries and then we'll put light bulbs over the solar panels at night to provide power then. Let's do that. Yay. Why not? Or, or you know what we do? We give money to people who don't need it to put panels on their houses so they won't produce any energy at night when they actually need it. Let's do that. Yeah, come on. Come on, get the, get the bloody checkbook out. Start giving out more bloody money. Go on, do it, do it. I've said before it's going to be a bumpy winter, he told Seven's Sunrise on Sunday. 2022, Australia. You're going to wait, just wait. Wait for people to die from lack of heating. Okay? Just wait for it. That's where this country's heading. I'm not being hyperbolic. It's not a problem we should have. Okay? This is what happens when you let ideology drive public policy decisions. The system is not fit for purpose. So we've got a, a short-term plan to keep the lights on that has worked so far. Then we have a long-term plan to get plan to get more investment into the system. Yeah. Yeah, just where, what's what are you going to invest in? The same shit that you have now that isn't working? Mr. Bohm blamed a decade of changing energy energy policies and not enough investment in energy. Okay, and non-renewable energy. Good. Energy storage, yeah. I mean, look at Europe. What do they got? Four minutes of energy capacity in their batteries. Batteries are not the solution. There's embodied energy in the production of batteries. Okay, so that's a problem. And you've got to dispose of these things. They don't last forever. Sure, on individual individual prepper level maybe yeah you know go ahead when i get my house done 
I'll get a whole bunch of old boat batteries and use them for backup power, but not at this scale that they're talking about. Okay? Leave it to the individual. Uh, 10,000 kilometers of transmission wire across the country. It's not going to happen this year. We can start, and we've started, and we are starting. Okay, whatever. Um, What we can do is over the next few years, get it built, get the pressure on energy prices through... Renewable energy, yeah, okay. It it means bullshit, okay? Here's the thing. I look at how much is actually produced with this stuff, okay? All the time. I, I guess it's my profession as an architect. We got fed so much greenwashing bullshit at university. Like, I mean, you see, one of the senators is a archi- uh, the new green senator here in Brisbane. She's an architect. I've met her husband. He, he judged a competition we ran when we first started our, our business. Uh, you know, nice people. But it just shows you, in our profession, there's so, so much greenwashing. So much greenwashing. We were really, really fed it. And I started looking at the actual basis of some of the arguments, and I became very skeptical of it, because a lot of it didn't stack up. You know, you've, you can make all these claims, and it can sound good, you know, they'll be saying like, oh, wow, we built a new, a new 420 megawatt wind farm in Victoria. They won't tell you that things only running at 20% capacity or sometimes it's running at 0% capacity or when there's no wind, it's not running at all. You know, they won't tell you that. That doesn't make the news. That's not in the soundbite. You need to look and there's a certain percentage of output that these things need to achieve or else they're going to be a net negative because this is an op. All of this... All of this shit here built here. This is an opportunity. There's an opportunity cost to building all of this infrastructure. Now, we could have directed that infrastructure into some fossil fuel power generation systems. Okay, so the opportunity cost of this is, I don't know, a coal plant, two coal plants. What would have been more reliable now? We need to teach people at school the concept of embodied energy, embodied carbon, cradle to cradle for all of these infrastructure that you're putting in and opportunity cost. These are concepts that need to be taught in school that people need to be aware of so they can critically think about the ideological propaganda that they're being fed by the media, by the super funds, by the banks, by the politicians. That's what we need. That's the future. That's the hope I have for Australia right there. And I think that's the job of every parent. Because it's not going to come from the schools. The teachers don't have time. Anyway, his comments came as Tenant Reid of the Australian Industry Group warned of looming price increases for households. Mr. Reid told Nine News the international competition for coal and gas would inevitably keep generation costs high domestically. We are currently in the frying pan and we're, we're lucky we will emerge into the slow cooker over the next couple of months, he said. See, this is the thing. It doesn't matter if coal prices are surging if we had capacity to meet that demand. What infrastructure has there been? You know, what's a coal plant in the Hunter? Sorry, a coal mine in the Hunter. No one could find a buy for it. This is the problem. This is all this bullshit. There's no infra- no political drive to invest in this. And no, And you've got to understand, this ideological fanaticism that we're seeing from the Greens, that we're seeing in large parts of our political and our culture, our culture has really gone through the whole business class as well, the whole management class. It's such woke bullshit in lots of big corporations, guys. And I guess you just got to go, you know, go, along, go along with the crap. Over the next two years, it's likely that households will be paying 50% more for their electricity and potentially double for their gas. Meanwhile, the Australian energy market operator will lift its suspension of the national electricity market at 2 p.m. on Friday. The AEMO last week seized control of the market for the first time in history to stabilize power supplies and thwart the threat of blackouts. See, they shouldn't have done that. You should get blackouts. We deserve blackouts for the stupid decisions we've made. Anyway, let's have a talk about this one. Guys. I hope you can... See my frustrations with all of this. I don't think we're going to learn the lessons that we need to. 
as I said, we need to push for young people. The next, this last generation that have just started voting, I think they're a lost cause. I think we just forget them. We need to get the, you know, into the minds of the younger generation, our children. You need to teach them the concepts of embodied energy. You need to teach them the concepts of embodied carbon, cradle to cradle, how these renewable things don't last forever, and how if you make prices go up for energy, it's going to put the cost of living up and it's going to destroy the quality of people's lives. Australia won't be the lucky country anymore. This is going to, it's been a slow shift for the lefties, so it has to be a sh- slow shift through the institutions for sensible people. That's the only hope I see here because this is just getting nuts. Many politicians have warned about these issues. They're just all ignored. The media doesn't give a shit. They're just prattling the same crap. Anyway, you, you tell me what you think. Sorry, this is probably a, a bit of a frustrating topic, but I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can financially support us via joining on YouTube or Patreon, using our referral links, or buying our merch. If you need an architect, give us a call. Take care, everyone. Yeah. I, I really hope we don't lose too many businesses because of this. I really hope we don't. I need to get that generator back and get some petrol, just in case.